Pixio has been busy. Pixio's got a lot of monitors coming out. Something a little bit for everybody, and I have to say I'm kind of excited about that because, you know, Pixio is a, it's a smaller brand, but they're sort of filling the gap where some of the Korean monitors that maybe were filling the gap before, I guess, because if you know me, I mean, I've been, I've, I've ordered so many Korean monitors over the last, you know, like six, eight, ten years, and it's because you can get a really good panel with basically, I mean, it's just no electronics strapped to the back and just the raw LCD panel, because that's mostly what matters, right, as long as it's feeding the graphics card correctly. Well, Pixio has sort of turned that into a business model, but they're actually doing better and better work in terms of their interface electronics. And so today I'm looking at the PXC32. Now the PXC32 has an HDMI 2.0 input capable of FreeSync, as well as a DisplayPort input also capable of FreeSync. In general, I'm gonna recommend that you use the DisplayPort output, but even with Raven Ridge on the HDMI output, this monitor did really well. 2560 by 1440 is the resolution of this 32 inch curved widescreen. So it is that sort of 16 by nine aspect ratio. It's not an ultra wide or anything like that. But me personally, I happen to really, really like 2560 by 1440. 2560 by 1440 was some of the you know, was the resolution of some of the original monitors that I was importing from Korea. So we need to test it, and we need to test it with FreeSync, and what better system to test it in than a Raven Ridge system. This is a Ryzen, I think this is a Ryzen 3 2200G, so this is a really great starter system. This is in the Fractal Mesh if I see Mini, and I'm also using the MSI B350. Now, current chipset is a B450, but hey, the B350s are on sale, and for Raven Ridge, it's totally okay. Now, if I do decide to get a discrete graphics card later, I can just plug that in. I can use that with my existing CPU, but I can also upgrade my CPU. I could get, you know, a Ryzen 5 2600 or Ryzen 7 2700 or the 2700X or the 2600X, as long as I've got, you know, because you go from Ryzen plus Vega to just Ryzen, so keep that in mind. But you've got a pretty nice little system. Now, in terms of monitor specs, this is an LED backlight. It's a Samsung panel. The panel code is an LSM 315DP01, and that's a PVA type panel, 2560 by 1440, native uh, refresh of 144 hertz, maximum brightness of 280, uh, display size 31.5 inches, a viewing angle of 178 degrees, and the response time advertised from Samsung is four milliseconds, and it is a little overclockable. I'm also super happy to report that in this box, you've got a 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter visa mount, and if you're looking for a fancier height adjustable Visa stand, Pixio is also offering Visa stands. So take a look at the Pixio Visa stand website. You know, there's a, I think there's a couple of different models, but maybe they've got an older model that they're on closeout because I've got the older one, which is actually a really good height adjustable stand, but they got a newer, fancier one looking one as well. Now, one of our testing implements is a Leo Bodnar sort of latency measuring device. This really just gives us a baseline for what we're looking at in terms of HDMI signal to panel latency. So there you have it, a very respectable 3.8 milliseconds in the best case scenario, oddly on the FPS setting. So in the on-screen display, you've got some different options for different modes you can put the monitor in, and it seems like the FPS mode is the fastest at about 3.8 milliseconds. In the standard mode, it's about 5.6 milliseconds, something like that, and that's just the delay from the time the frame is ready on the graphics card to the time that the monitor actually starts displaying that frame. Just to put it in context, um, a uh, frame rate delay of one frame at 60 hertz would be about 16.6 .6 milliseconds. So this is less than 1 60th of a second. In fact, it's less than 1 10th of a second. It's about a half a tenth of a second. Wait, I got that wrong. That's not right at all. <laughs> At about five milliseconds, that's five thousandths of a second of uh, delay that the panel introduces, which is very, very respectable. The best numbers that we've seen are one to two milliseconds, but five milliseconds, honestly, it's not gonna make that much of a difference. A lot of panels are running 16 to 24 milliseconds behind, at least a lot of non-gaming monitors, especially some of the monitors that I get from Korea. Those are gonna be running about one frame behind, so about 16 milliseconds behind at 60 hertz, or you know about 7.5 at, at 
uh, 120 hertz. Now this monitor does have accent lighting at the back, but as far as I can tell, it's red only, no RGB, just red. Also, as part of our standard battery of tests, we use the Spider 5 color calibrator with the DisplayCal software suite to sort of see how this panel stacks up. Now, we know this is a Samsung panel and we know that it's sort of a, a fast response time Samsung panel, but how does it do in terms of color accuracy? All right, so what are we looking at in terms of the Adobe sRGB, you know, NTSC color gamut? Well, for sRGB, we're talking about a 99.14% coverage. For the DCI-P3 coverage, we're talking about 88.59%, and Adobe RGB, 81% coverage, which honestly is not bad for a gaming monitor that goes up to 144 hertz. And finally, in terms of fit and finish, this monitor's not bad. It's got a nice diffuse filter on it so that it's not gonna glare really bad. In fact, you can see from the studio lights in terms of what's being recorded that, you know, the glare really isn't that bad and there's two, you know, studio lights basically right there uh, sort of raining down terror on this particular monitor. The plastic is, is nice and well done. It feels pretty sturdy. This monitor is kind of thick. It's got sort of a heft to it. So I think Pixio's really sort of had to figure out how to get more electronics in here or something for this particular panel type. Uh, I'm not really sure because some of the other models, you know, is like super thin. The bezels are pretty small and I, and I like what they've done with the, uh, the edging here. It would make it really easy to put, you know, multiple of these monitors together in case you want to get like a three up setup or something like that. As I said, the, the stand is not height adjustable, but if you want a height adjustable stand, that is optional, you can get that. Or you can get a Visa stand. You know, as I mentioned, the Visa mounts come with it. The, uh, the plastic doesn't really pick up fingerprints or give or anything like that. I let it stay on for 10 or 15 minutes because some of the earlier models, you know, as they start to warm up, the plastic will expand a little bit and make a noise. This one doesn't seem to do that. Overall, the fit and finish on this is, is really, it's really well done. I mean, the, uh, the stand, even, even though it's just, you know, aluminum, I guess it's anodized aluminum or, or black aluminum or something, even the finish on that is pretty nice. It's sort of a, sort of a, a matte, a matte black, but it's a smooth finish. So, so what's the final verdict on this monitor? It's an AMD FreeSync monitor. And in my testing, I had a lot more problems on the FreeSync side of things than I really did with this particular display. I was really excited to show this off with Vega plus Raven Ridge because honestly, I think a Ryzen, a, well, Ryzen plus Vega 2400G is a great entry level system for doing some gaming without spending a whole bunch of money. I mean, that CPU is pretty powerful. It's four cores, eight threads. Uh, you can pair it with some, some faster memory. Eight gigs would be plenty, but you know, 16 gigs, that's fine too. That's what our test system was. And that's a, that's a really compelling combo. But most of the motherboards that you would get, that you would pair with that you know, Ryzen 5 2400G, Ryzen plus Vega, um, only have HDMI and DVI out. Now you're not gonna be doing FreeSync over DVI. Uh, just HDMI, but FreeSync works better over DisplayPort, at least right now. I tested a bunch of B350 and B450 motherboards and it was a mixed bag as to whether I could count on FreeSync support out of the HDMI port actually working. Now in terms of FreeSync over DisplayPort, way less problematic. And in terms of FreeSync support with, you know, an RX 550, 560, 570, 580, RX Vega, no problem even over HDMI. I mean, that's totally fine. I don't know why I had so many problems with HDMI. And that's kind of what delayed this review because I wasn't sure is like, is this the monitor? Is this the, the driver stack? And Ryzen Plus Vega is kind of new. I mean, the driver stack on Linux is still in a teething stage for sure, but that's the biggest problem that I had out of this setup. So I think if you get a motherboard that has DisplayPort out, if you intend to use Raven Ridge, you're gonna be totally okay. If you're gonna be using discrete, uh, like a discrete graphics card, DisplayPort or HDMI, you've got the choice, use DisplayPort. You can thank me later. Overall, I think Pixio has done a really good job. Pixio is, as a company, is growing and investing more in products and more different kinds of products to sort of um, bring some monitors to the middle of the market. There are gamers monitors that are at the super, super high end and the kind of features that are important to gamers, things like FreeSync, high refresh rate, that sort of thing, this monitor delivers. I think in terms of picture quality, the picture quality in terms of the gamut coverage and that kind of thing was surprisingly good, again, for a gaming monitor. I'm sure that if we push 
the panel even faster, faster than 144 hertz, that I would guess that the color accuracy would suffer. So 99% sRGB is not bad. 81% Adobe RGB, I don't think you wanna be correcting photos on this monitor. You could probably make it work, but 99% of sRGB is not bad. I mean, that for a gaming monitor that goes up to 144 hertz, you have to gonna get some leeway there. So in terms of fit finish, packaging, warranty, other features, Pixio has basically nailed it. I mean, it's a good value monitor, well, good sort of middle of the road monitor. It's not the least expensive monitor you can get, but it's definitely by no means the most expensive. And at 2560 by 1440, if you start with a Raven Ridge machine, you're not really gonna be gaming at 2560 by 1440. You're gonna start probably at 1080p, but you could grow into it with discrete graphics. So I think for your first build, this would be a pretty good monitor that you can grow into because really you shouldn't be replacing your monitor, you know, every system that you upgrade or even every other system that you upgrade. I use some monitors on a daily basis that are over 10 years old, which is, you know, eh, but I work a lot, so maybe that's okay. If you pick up one of these and you should want to show pictures off of your setup or your rig or whatever, come hang out in the Level 1 forums. I'm Wendell Up signing out and I'll see you there. Oh, and before I forget, there's gonna be a color profile that you can download that we generated with this, with our DisplayCal software that you can download. So you can, you know, if your panel happens to be close to ours, it'll get you a little bit closer in terms of like the Windows color profile. So there should be a link to that in the description. Well, a link to the forum post that should have that. So 